Okay, I was going to do a demonstration with uh, this Raspberry Pi, and um, it has a Sojo app on it. And instead of showing you just a slide, let me show you what the, at least the interface looks like. Um, uh, that's the Sojo app running here. Here's a camera. And what you can do is hold a device over the camera, or, or an object over the camera. For example, uh, there's rock, um, paper, scissors, and you can train it by hitting the buttons where it says image one, image two, image three. And then when you move, and I hold rock over there where it says object one, it would say rock. And it would say paper, and it would say uh, scissors. Right. Um, and it, it learns just like that. And the trick is this little USB device that's attached to the Raspberry Pi, uh, which has all the brains to do the, the uh, uh, image identification. But uh, when I move the mouse just a little bit, it keeps, <laughs> I moved it like a quarter inch and it keeps going haywire on me. So, and we tried two different mice and uh, rebooted it and everything else and I give up. It wins, I lose. Um, so anyway, that was my demo, which uh, now is going to save about 10 minutes. Um, so first of all, what is machine learning? Um, oh, thank you very much. OK, machine learning, and that was a demo of machine learning, um, supposed to be. Uh, is the most common uh, um, uh, type of artificial intelligence. And, you know, this is a big subject in the world today, and pretty much everything you hear about artificial intelligence is machine, really machine learning. Uh, that's the monkey in the room at this point, or the elephant in the room. Uh, and this is all about systems that are designed to learn rather than, than perform a specific task. Um, the learning process, like what I was going to try and do there, creates a mathematical model, which is actually a file that then you use to make future predictions or decisions. Um, most of the models that, you, that are out there are based on massive databases, big, huge databases, uh, although there are some exceptions to that. Learning from scratch is possible without a big uh, historical database. Gaming is the best example of this. For example, if you're trying to teach a computer to play chess, you have to just play chess hundreds of thousands of times. Each time, if it wins, you give it a score of one. If it doesn't win, you give it a score of zero. And eventually, the algorithms say, well, one is good, zero is bad. And it gets better and better over time. Um, the other thing that's possible is transfer learning. Now, the, the Raspberry Pi demo is transfer learning. What I had there is not a lot of data, but I used an existing model that, knew, that knows how to identify objects. And then you just fine tune it for the particular object. We're going to use Dana's lipstick and a little Sojo magnet and things like that. And so it can instantly learn how to identify those. And it's a great, a great example with the Raspberry Pi where like in a manufacturing setting, you could control a conveyor, uh, some solenoids, you could sort uh, objects, you could look for defects in a manufacturing process. And, and we're talking about a $150 worth of hardware there. Really not much to do that. Okay, there's three steps in um, machine learning. The first is you need a model file. And there's tons of existing domain, public domain, or pay-as-you-go models. Um, you name it, it's out there. Uh, I just saw a model that identifies military hardware in videos. So, you know, some guy in Ukraine is filming, you know, the Russian convoy coming down the street, and it tells somebody how many uh, uh, personnel carriers, how many uh, uh, artillery, things like that were in the. You can also create your own, and I'll demo that. I hope I demo that. I, the way things are going today. My Mac crashed earlier, believe it or not. Um, once you have a model file, you deploy it, which is called an inference. And this is where you use the model to make future decisions and predictions. The third step is, is optional, but generally really important, is you refine the model over time. 
Um, as you gain more data, as you gain more experience, you should be able to get the model to uh, be more accurate. And there's three methods of building uh, models. The first is called supervised, and this is the most common. Um, and this is a learn by example from historical data. So you've got this huge database, and it has all the actual answers in it, and it learns from that. Um, this data is called labeled data, and labeled data is really, really important to get the labels right. If you don't get the labels right, it's really bad, and labeling can be very time consuming and expensive. Um, if you're Twitter and you're taking all these tweets and you're trying to find which ones are objectionable for some reason, somebody's got to go through and say this is objectionable and this isn't, and that can be very time consuming and expensive. The data must be very representative. It's got to be random and properly labeled. If it's not, it's garbage in, it's garbage out, big time. You hear banks talking about well, we're going to automate our loan process. Well, if your existing loan database is full of uh, discriminatory practices, your model's going to be full of discriminatory practices. The second method is called unsupervised, which is really a bad name for it. I don't know who came up with that, but it's more like data clustering. And this is where you take these massive databases and you organize them into manageable groups. Um, this is used in recommendation systems, marketing, demographic work. If Netflix tells you you should watch this movie, this is how they're, how they're doing it. There's often no single correct answer. In supervised learning, you're looking for the, a really a single answer, yes, no, uh, uh, A or B, something like that. Here it's a little more vague. The third method is reinforcement. Now this is really the most powerful and probably the most scary in the science fiction movies and so on. Uh, this is learned by trial and error. The computer will try something. If it fails, it tries something else. If it succeeds, then it expands on that and it continually grows. So the desired behavior is numerically or re rewarded and the algorithms continually try and do better and better. So model building. It's a very process intensive uh, op or operation. Um, Really complex models require petaflop type speeds and at this point custom hardware. That's where the big advancements have been in this field and um, that's why we have so much machine learning today is the custom hardware. Um, for this reason and some others, uh, building your model in the cloud is really ideal. First of all, that's often where your data is. I mean, if you've got a terabyte database sitting in the cloud somewhere, it doesn't make sense to move that to some other uh, system and then move it back and forth. There's also uh, in the cloud, there's this custom hardware is available to you. You, you, know, you have to pay for it, but uh, it, it's there. You can scale as you go. I do simple little models and I pay you know, $2 to have the model built. Netflix is probably paying thousands of dollars to have their models built. Um, and you pay as you go. Um, there, uh, Numerous players in this, in, in this business. Amazon, Amazon Web Service, Google, Google Cloud Platform, uh, Microsoft, IBM, all offers this service if you're interested in it. Now, your inference options. The first option is leave the model in the cloud and access it with some kind of API. It's got a lot of benefits. Uh, again, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, IBM, all offer this service. So build it in the cloud, leave it in the cloud. The second is what we call an edge inference. And this is where the model physically sits and the processing is done at the collection point. So your self-driving car can't send an image up to, the, up to the cloud to say, is that traffic light red or green? That doesn't work. It's got to be done right at the inf at the, as an edge inference. Um, so if latency, connectivity, bandwidth, security, if those are a concern, then you need to go with an edge inference. And if you're working with Mac OS, iOS, or Windows, there's libraries built into the operating system to do that. There's also dedicated hardware. There's this USB accelerator, which I had on the Raspberry Pi, which um, gives it the horsepower it needs to do the analysis. Uh, that's $60 item with a you know, $40 Raspberry Pi, it's, it's a cheap option. There's hobby level things, uh, Adafruit, uh, SparkFun, those kind of uh, companies 
they sell things between $15 and $75 that will do edge inferences. And then there's Raspberry Pi, what I call Raspberry Pi-like devices uh, that range from $100 to $200, but they run um, on 64-bit Linux ARM, which we found out today, hopefully we'll have soon. And here's a picture of one, this is one that I have, um, and you can see it looks very much like a Raspberry Pi, except the massive heat sink. Uh, and the fan. And you can see there's HDMI, USB, uh, 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 audio in and out. There's on the back the same uh, general purpose I.O. pins that you get on a Raspberry Pi. And um, it, uh, you know, the Ethernet, whatever. And um, I haven't been able to build a Zojo app for this yet, but hopefully uh, soon. Um, so a little more on the edge inference. If, again, if you're using Mac OS, built into Mac OS starting with 10.13 is Core ML. You could use Declares to access that, but the easiest thing to do, do is use Christian's uh, Monkey Bread software plugins, which I'll demonstrate shortly. Um, there's also the USB accelerator. We'll run on a Mac, the one that I had on the Pi that I couldn't get to work. Uh, it has, comes with C++ libraries and um, Python. And what I do to run from Sojo, uh, because I couldn't afford to do the C to do a plugin, um, is use a shell and just make Python calls uh, from Sojo. And that works quite well. For iOS, starting with uh, 11, you can also use Declares or the Monkey Bread um, plugins. For Windows, starting with Windows 10, Windows ML was built in. Um, you, again, you can use declares, but it's much easier to use Christian's plugin. You also have the option of the Coral USB device. Um, for Linux, there are distributions that have machine learning libraries built in, or you can always add one in. And again, you have the Coral USB accelerator. Jumping back to cloud services. Uh, as I mentioned, you can build your own uh, model in the cloud, and I will do that shortly, I hope. Uh, if something goes right today. Um, and as I mentioned also, they can host your model. But there's a whole suite of pre-trained services that are available in the cloud. And this is really what I use in my you know, day to day life and products that I, that I uh, make and sell. And again, these services are available from the same people and others from Amazon, Google, Microsoft, and IBM. And I break them down into various groups. The first is machines communications group. Um, when it comes to text, it will comprehend text. You pass it a whole bunch of text and comes back with comprehension. Uh, text to speech, which of course we can do on the desktop, so it's not that big a deal. And language translation. Google Translate can be accessed this way. Um, from an audio standpoint, you can transcribe. Transcribe uh, audio into text. You can build those annoying customer service chat bots, the ones that don't give you the answers you want, either text-based or, or audio-based. And then the really big one that, that's really used quite a bit is image and video machine vision, like facial identification, keyword identification, optical code rec uh, character recognition, logo detection, you name it, and I'll show you a bunch of that shortly. There's also a whole bunch of other services like business forecasting, recommendation system, resume evaluation, call centers, fraud detection, you name it, it stuff's out there. And these are all very available through REST APIs, okay? So you send out a post uh, or get HTTPS request with a JSON payload and you get back some kind of response with the, with, with the results, for example, Google Translate, I say, here's some text, I, it's in English, I want to translate to Spanish, back comes the Spanish, just like that. So you get back the requested data, generally it's in a JSON format, um, you can get back massive JSON arrays, it's really a chore to, to uh, crunch through them all, you get back X, Y, height, width, timestamp information for audio video, you get back a confidence level, this is one of the really most important parts of this, uh, the question is, the data you sent it, how confident is it that that data is correct? If you send it a face and say, you know, is this face in this video, and it comes back with 50%, it's not very good. If it comes back with 99%, that, 
faces probably in the video. Some of these services are synchronous. Some of you send it out, it comes right back. Others are batch. You send it out, you get back a batch number, and then you have to submit another request to get your actual data. It really depends on the service and the size of the files. The hardest part of all this with, with those services, particularly Amazon and Google, is the authorization. They give you authorization keys, and you've got to bundle this up, and you've got to encrypt it, and, and you have to sign it, and it's, it's really a mess. But come to the rescue, I have classes, which you all now have for both Amazon and Google. Um, for Sojo, they use API 1. I haven't moved them to API 2, but it wouldn't be very, very difficult. And URL connection to do all the work. Um, it requires a 2019 R1 or newer. You do not need any plugins. Uh, they are not, my, my uh, uh, classes are not as complete as the SDKs that Amazon and Google provides, um, but they're really easy to modify and expand. Um, each one includes a link uh, to the documentation, and I do some JSON parsing for you so you can see at least how it's done. I got out of order there a little bit. Um, but there's a link at the top of each uh, method, the main method where you click on it, and it takes you right to the documentation so you can see all the things that maybe I didn't expose. It includes the authorization. It, all you have to do is get your own keys, you put those in, and you're all set to go. You do need to create a free account, uh, or an account, which can be free if you don't, if you don't use it. Um, actually, you can use it uh, quite a bit without incurring any cost. Uh, there's the address for Amazon and Google. You go to there, and it, they'll walk you through setting up an account. And the, the pricing and everything is very well laid out. A lot of the services are free, or there's a minimum, a tier, that if which you don't exceed, you're not charged. My typical bill for a month, um, I don't even know why they charge me, is usually about a dollar. <laughs> but it comes through on my credit card. I don't, I don't care. And they, uh, as I said, there's, you, there's quite a bit of things you can do for free. You can try it. Okay, so let's go back to some demos here. And this is a demo that I did. For those who were in Miami, saw something similar. Um, what I did is I went out and I, and I screen captured the uh, promotional video that Dana and crew did for uh, Miami XDC. And I also went out and I grabbed images off the web of various people that were seen in that video. I uploaded the video to Amazon's service uh, to an, an S3 bucket, if everybody knows what an S3 bucket is. And then these headshots here, I uploaded into what they call a collection. And that was all done with the REST API. Fairly simple to do. Um, one other thing before I play the video, uh, if I click on any one, it tells me, well, that's uh, Jason. I, it doesn't know that that's Jason. I told it it was Jason, so I, I don't want to be out of line there. Uh, he's a male, he's 26 to 43, he's smiling, he's happy. Let's look at Jeff. Um, and, and this is standard stuff that, that, a, that Amazon or Google or, or these other companies will do. They look at the picture and they can glean this information from that picture. So that's one of the services you get. Um, the other thing, as the video is playing, um, I transcribed... Um, the audio into text, which you'll see where it says English, and then I translated it in Spanish, so you'll see it in Spanish. Um, now, I have to admit, this is all done batch. This is not real time. Um, these are all services that you, you ask, you send a request out, you get a job number, you get it back, you get this big JSON file, and then you work from the JSON file. So, um, you know what, we didn't hook up the audio. Maybe if I get close enough here. Hopefully you can hear it. You hear it? Yeah. Okay, the white boxes are just people it identifies. It doesn't know particularly who they are. It's just a person. But there it's identified Jason, there's Paul, there's Philip. 
it didn't pick up Jeff there, but there it's got Jeff, Aaron. And the color indicates I just, that's work I did. Over on the right, you can see that XY data I'm getting out of the JSON file. I just displayed it just so you could see what's going on. And note the English and the Spanish. William Big Star there. Jason here in, in, in the video at least. Okay. Then the, the other thing I did is I, I ran the, the text. Uh, I told it to uh, comprehend the text. Notice it says the sentiment is positive here, which you know is true. It finds quantities, 40% was said at some point. Uh, the big thing is key phrases here. You know, if you have masses amount of customer um, uh, uh, surveys, you know, you can you could run them through this and find, you know, what are people generally saying without having to read them all. Okay. So there's the video. Okay, um, let's we'll just keep track of where I'm at here. Okay, now I'm going to go, hopefully I've got an internet connection here. It looks like I do. I kept lo losing that earlier. Um, I'm going to show you how you can build a model. This is using Google's AutoML service. Now, they've actually changed the name and they've changed this interface a little bit. And they did that uh, a couple weeks ago. And I didn't want to... The, notice it says migrate to Vertex AI and go to Vertex AI. That's their new version of this. I didn't want to change at the last minute because I thought it was uh, going to cause me problems. Anyway, I, what I did here, um, my wife likes to take pictures of uh, everything, including monkeys near our house in Costa Rica. And we have three types of, of monkeys down there, um, howler, squirrel, and capuchin. And I thought, well, can I, I uh, you know, create a model that will identify those three types of monkeys. So the first thing you do, and, and, and AutoML to me is the easiest way to build a model by far. The first thing you do is you just import, you import the data that you want. Now, I've already done that. Um, and you can use this. This is the interface for images. But there's another interface if you have a table a structured data, uh, you know, a database, something like that. So once the images are uploaded, you have to label them. Remember, I mentioned labeling. So each one of these, I had to go through and identify myself which type of monkey it was. Um, now, they make it really kind of easy to do this. In fact, what I did is I created three folders on my desktop, and I named the folders Howler, Capuchin, and Squirrel, and then I just dragged the images into that folder, zipped the folders all together, and uploaded it. And Google separates it out and labels them all. But you can go in here and you can label them individually. And you can change them and do whatever you need to do. And I only have one label per image, but you can have multiple. So I could have male and female. But I couldn't do that because I can't tell <laughs> whether they're male or female. Um, so, yeah. um, and so I can't expect the, the machine learning to do it either. Um, now, I only have a total of 51 images. You can see the statistics over there on the left. They tell you that you need at least 100 images for each label. So I'm not even close to that. But I didn't want to spend $50 building a model. I, you know, as it was, it's like $2, $3 to just do this, this model. So once you've got this all in here and these are all labeled, then you go to training. And uh, these are, you can see two models I've already done, but you know, if I hit this train new model, I'm not going to do this. It takes about 25 minutes, even with just this amount of data. And you can see the first question I have, uh, hopefully you can see that, is do I want to cloud host this or do I want it edge? If I do it edge, it builds a, a file I can download. 
there are about six different options of different, there's uh, different uh, operating systems use different uh, uh, formats, uh, but they support them all. So, and then you can also set a budget so it doesn't just keep churning away and running your bill up. You can tell it I only want to spend an hour or two hours, um, but I'm going to cancel that. And what I'm going to do is take a look at this model that's already built. Now the key thing when building a model is this here, this confusion matrix. The standard practice in model building is you randomly hold back 20% of your data and you build with 80%. And then you use that 20% that you randomly held back to check your model. Now this is the absolute perfect situation. The 20% checked out perfectly. Uh, for, for the three different types. There were no errors. I have another model that their howlers did not check out very well. There was only about 40% correct based on the 20% that was held back. So then what you do is you get more howler pictures, you add those in, and you build another model. So this is ideal. Okay. Um, then here, you can, you can test from here. You can upload, and um, here you can see what the Python code looks like to run against your model and so on if you, you, know, you need that or, or what a REST API. This is in uh, curl. Uh, it gives you a curl command, which then you can translate into, into Sojo. So once you have the model, uh, there's a couple ways you can deploy it, or as I mentioned. You, you can deploy it in the cloud, or you can deploy it uh, edge. So this is a Sojo app that, that does both with the same model. First of all, I'll tell it to load the model. And this uses Christian's Monkey Bread um, plugins. So here's the model file that I built that you see uh, underneath on the, from, the, uh, from the Google website. And if I open the model, it loads it in. Okay. And now when I load, I have some pictures of monkeys here. Let's see. Uh, okay, that's a squirrel monkey. Well, let me do this one here. Okay, that's a howler monkey. And what this did, it took 0.06 seconds to identify it as a howler monkey using the monkey bread plugins and Mac OS Core ML. To send it up to the cloud, where I also have a copy, it took 1.28 seconds. So there's the difference. Now, I'll, if I run it again, it will be a little different. It, it varies. A lot of it has to do with the size of the file. If you have to upload the file to the cloud, if it's 3 megabytes, it's one thing. If it's 10 megabytes, it's another. In fact, I think with Google, if it's much over 3 megabytes, you have to submit a job and it becomes asynchronous and you have to wait for it to come back and so on. So there's the difference of, of um, cloud versus edge um, uh, inferences. Okay. So how are we doing? 333, okay. Let's go and look at, okay, this is, all, yeah, I know you can't see them real well because you can't, I, I don't want to blow up the screen, it's screwing around for me. Um, these are the classes for Amazon to access all these services through, through their API. And um, if you want to use these classes, you just copy that folder into your project. And I built this interface. It, it's, it's evolved over time. Um, and it's really solely to test the, uh, my classes to, run the, to test the API or to execute the API. So I've got some, some text in here. And I can translate it, in this case, from English. And you can see these are all the languages that are available, which is just, I mean, Dari, you, you name it, it's here. We have difference between the, the French and the French Canadians. How about that? We have both here. Um, and I'll just translate it from English to Spanish. Now, it's kind of a weird sentence, uh, and it's kind of intentional, because bat in English 
is to, you know, baseball bat and a vampire bat are two different things. In Spanish, they're two different words, entirely different words. And the question is, is it going to understand the difference? And if I hit translate, um, believe it or not, last week it worked differently than this week. And that's because uh, they're always changing the models. Um, where it says el bate vampiro, that's bate is the wrong word. That's, it should be murcielago. Okay? Um, for the last year and a half, it's been murcielago. And all of a sudden, it becomes bate. So they're constantly evolving and changing things. Sometimes they're going back, sometimes they're going forward. Um, but it gets baseball bat correct, but the vampire bat, it gets wrong. Um, I can have it speak this text. Uh, again, I'll have to uh, um, get my mic close here. Let's use English. Uh, Kendra, okay, that's fine. Um, now, pay attention to what it says for the date. Uh, and again, it's kind of a weird sentence. Even after she hit it with a baseball bat, the vampire bat bit her on the neck on January 2nd, 2020. Okay, January 2nd. If I switch this to Emma, who's British, what's she going to say? Even after she hit it with a baseball bat, the vampire bat bit her on the neck on the 1st of February 2020. <laughs> so in some regards, it's really smart. In other regards, eh, not so much. And, you know, I can comprehend this text. We've seen this a little bit. It's 99% sure it's English, key phrases, uh, parts of speech all listed here, and so on. Amazing analysis on that. Um, let's do a transcription. Um, I've got an, an audio file up on Amazon, and what I'm going to do is tell it I want to transcribe that. Now, here's an example where I get back a job number. I don't, and if I go here and I list my jobs, you can see the job's in progress right now. Each one of these, each time I click, it's an API call. Simple REST API call. Now, this normally doesn't take a long time, but let's go ahead and play the audio while it's working on it. Open the pod bay doors, Hal. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. What's the problem? I think you know what the problem is just as well as I do. Okay, so everybody knows that's, you know, the famous lines from 2001. Let's list our jobs. Now it's, a, ah, it's completed, okay? So now I can get the transcribed text, and bang, there it is. And um, the colors are supposed to indicate uh, different people speaking. So let's play the audio again. Open the pod bay doors, Hal. That's Dave. I'm sorry, Dave. That's I'm Hal. Afraid I can't do that. What's the problem? That's wrong. I think you know what the problem is just as well as I do. Now, those voices are very similar. And usually it gets that right. Um, and I've colored the, the, uh, that. It, in the JSON, it tells you speaker one, speaker two, and so on. But it doesn't seem to realize that what's the problem is, is uh, switch back to Dave. Um, OK, let's do some, some image stuff. And we got, we're getting good. OK, the, this is, Amazon at this point is the only, P, uh, the only service that's really doing facial recognition. And that's largely because of the uh, controversy on the whole issue, uh, which I think is way overblown. But glad to talk to you about that off. Off uh, uh, after we're over. Um, let's go ahead and grab, whoops. Didn't mean to do that. Let's grab this and drop it in here. And it's 99.7% sure, 99.7% sure that that's Arnold Schwarzenegger. Right, we got that just for fun. And this is a lot of, I, I, honestly, I play with this. A bit. Uh, that it doesn't know who that is. Okay, I know it's Arnold. Um, let's grab this. Whoops, 
Sorry about that. I don't use my trackpad much. Come on. Sorry, folks. What is going on here? Uh, Yeah. Okay, we know who they are, right? The Osbournes? Okay, so we're 99.4 percent that if I click on it, uh, maybe can you see that it put a box around oh, yeah. his yeah. face? And then 99.6, that's Sharon. Um, we can also do a compare. And if we grab Ozzy and drop him in this box, and this is real time, okay? This, I actually made, this is a, a real API call at that moment. If I click, it's 99% similar to Ozzy, and only 1% similar to Sharon. Okay. Um, let's look at moderation. If I grab, let's say, this. It tells me it's suggestive. I was trying to find an image that was not totally obscene, but anyway. If I grab... Um, uh, this image and look at moderation. It knows that that's somebody smoking. Um, let's just switch this to keywords. Uh, you can see it it's a pretty good job of determining what's in that, in that image. Again, this is real-time stuff that it's doing this. Um, let's go to um, extract text. And you want to see how they give you a ticket for uh, going through a red light. And there's, picks up the driver, the license uh, there. Um, now here's an interesting thing. My wife is big time into gene genealogy. Uh, she's French American. Um, and she belongs to this genealogy society, and they have volumes of pages like that look like this. And what it is is it's newspaper clippings of obituaries, and they want to digitize all this, which is you know quite a chore because the you know the paper's yellowed, um, things are you know handwriting on there or whatnot. It's three columns, uh, OCRs read across. It's all mixed up, but. Each one of the, it does a fantastic job of determining the, getting the information here. Um, and when I click on it, uh, it's hard for you to see, but it knows where on the page each, each word is. So what I was able to do is determine where the columns were and properly parse this instead of across the whole page down each column. Um, and that actually worked out pretty well. Um, the other thing I can do here is paste this back here and comprehend this text. And, well, you see, I exceeded the limit uh, of the service I have, but uh, that was a an error message back from, uh, from uh, Amazon. But you can see it's got, it found dates and things. So making this data searchable from, from these volumes of, of newspaper cutouts is really, uh, you know, putting them into a database is, you know, locations, you know, here's a here's person's name. Uh, it's just phenomenal technology. Um, one last thing I want to do is, okay, there's a sentence. This is, you know, the, there's limitations, and, and the limitations are very important, very important to understand. Um, when you read this sentence, uh, you know, is it, is it a positive 
uh, thing or negative. This is from a review of, of a movie. And um, uh, uh, let's see. Uh, that's not what I wanted to take a look at. Oh, wait. <laughs> I know. I'm looking in the wrong place. Okay. All right. So it's 99% sure it's, it's in English. Um, but notice here it says this is positive. The sentiment of this is positive, when in fact it's, it's extremely negative. But this is a good example, and I wanted to kind of conclude with this, uh, of the limitations uh, in and it makes you feel good that being a human is still important, that you can understand that that's a negative thing and the computer doesn't understand that. So uh, there's that. Um, I've given Dana copies of, of um, this project, which has all the classes for Amazon and the Google project. Um, so um, enjoy. Any questions? Kim. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 It, I did the English the transcription from audio to English, and then a separate call to take the English text and convert it into Spanish text. Two totally independent things. Yeah. Um. The, the newspaper, yeah, there, there, it was purely OCR, optical char character recognition. Uh, it didn't. It didn't. I, I could, I could run that, but it, I, I don't have anything to compare it with. It, you could say, yeah, it's a man in his sixties, but I don't know who it is. Well, the name was in a caption underneath him. That's it. That's it. It wasn't uh, that. Well, yeah, I, uh, what I'd have to do is do a separate call to say, well, look at these graphics. Because all that was doing, that API call is only looking for text, and that's it. Yes? When you said you had a monkey or something running around in the cloud and running the desktop, mm -hmm. the person can turn them off. So I don't think uh, you're saying anything to the graphic monkey. So if you did, if you showed the percentage confidence that they're going to do the same thing. Um, you know, I'm not sure. Um, it, it, it came from the same data, um, but when you, when you build the model, you have to say, is it a cloud model or, a, or a, 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 an edge model? Um, so you're building it twice. Whether mm -hmm. they build it exactly the same way or not, I, you know, I'm not 100% sure. One's more accurate than the other. Um, you know, my data set's so small that, uh, you know, quite honestly, I'm lucky it works this well. Because I, you know, I got like 10, 15 images of each monkey species instead of 100. So. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what I could do. I, you know, I still, this is still running. If I go back to my desktop, uh, let's go to my desktop. And uh, it thinks it's a holiday. <laughs> yeah, so I thought it was a capuchin monkey and a holler monkey. I mean, you know, there is no none of the above, okay, in this case, so which is what it should be. Now, I probably should show the, um, uh, the confidence level. It's probably, you know, down to, you know, almost zero. Uh, yeah, well, the, 
it's not exactly the same file. I mean, it came from the same origins, but it's not exactly the same file. I mean, they, they have, uh, Google has their own format. And when I downloaded it, and when I built it for, for you know, to work with the plugins, it's a, a core, a, a Mac OS core ML uh, model file. So. Well, their algorithms probably aren't exactly the same. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And the, the format of the file is different and, and, and so on. So, yeah. I mean, it, it isn't a perfect technology, which is good. There's still use for us. <laughs> so, any other? Okay, another question. When you look at OCR, I noticed that it brings back the result, but it doesn't follow the column order like a schema would. Do you have that information at all? On the yeah, it, on the it tells me the position of every word. And so it, it was up to me to go and figure out where the columns were. Okay, so you could uh, find it based Yeah, on yeah, and I was able to do that. What I, actually, what I do is I ask the user, how many columns of, of are there? And then I figure out where the gutters are. Okay. And then so I read to the, to the gutter, and then actually I make, if there's three columns, I make three passes through the JSON array. The first pass, I look up to a certain point. The second pass, I look from the, that point to the next point, gutter, and so on. And, uh, and that actually worked pretty well. I, um, uh, you know, it's not exact, but. Uh, um, I believe there's models that will do that, that will transcribe music. Uh, there's a whole host of, of a machine learning in, in music. I mean, music creation, art creation, uh, there's a whole world of that, which, you know, I, I deal, my, my business, my consulting is more in uh, images and things like that. And, and for me, images demo well as opposed to just text and stuff. So I'm, I'm around for the duration, too, so if you have any questions. Yeah, Jeremy. Oh, sorry. Um, you, you could use two models with multiple labels. Um, you know, the monkeys I had, like I mentioned, I could have had a second label with male or female, um, or juvenile or adult or something like that. You can have multiple labels. Um, but you, you could probably do it either way. Um, I, you know, I don't have, honestly, I don't have enough experience with multiple labels to, to tell you. Um, you know, you can, you can play around with a lot for free, and there's differences between, uh, Amazon's got its strengths, it's Google has its strength, and you can try it with one and try it with another and see which one you get better results. But as I say, I mean, a week ago it was working differently than it's working now. So, you know, at one point I had a slide that compared the two services and said this is where I think the strengths are and the weaknesses. But I thought, uh, you know, I, I don't want to lead you down that path because I may be wrong. Yeah. The quality of the images and the, the resolution is limited by the Amazon, or you can upload huge images with better quality. Uh, the better, the bigger, the better. better yeah. Uh, in Especially when you upload images with more data, basically. Yeah, and, and the other thing is if, you, if your image is bigger, you're going to have to do it asynchronously. You know, I, I think it's three or four megabytes. If the image is bigger than that, it's going to say, I, here's a job number, check with, back with me later. It'll send you an email when it's done. Yeah. And, it, it, and the, the other thing is, I mentioned earlier, you know, you, you, where your data is is important. If, if, you, if you have a lot of images uh, that you want to analyze, then consider storing them in that company's storage because you can just reference it like if it's Amazon you can say go to these s3 images you don't have to upload them for that one use if you store them up there then you just reference them and it's much faster they're all in it all the services are all integrated I'm sorry I'm oh yeah well the the, the video I showed um, yeah mm-hmm how, how much money do you have? <laughs> I mean, I, you know, that 
that video I did, I cut it down just because there's no point after a minute or two of showing it to you. But um, yeah, I, you know, it's, um, you know, there, there's no limit. It's just you get your bill at the end of the month. And yep, sorry. Well, you know, you. It, I'm just I, wondering what what they are using from your side of the book that prevents you from further trying. Sure. To uh, yeah. I mean, it, it's an issue. I mean, you know, you'd have to read through Google or Amazon's uh, terms of service. You know, I I've never sent it anything that I'm. Right. You know, I don't send it a copy of my credit card or anything. Like that. <laughs> so. It's free or not free. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. The the you know the, their business model if. In that you know, for Amazon's Amazon Web Services isn't, isn't I don't think selling data like Google sells data and, and Facebook. Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. Well, those are those. That's public. Yeah, but you know, he's a public figure, so you know, it, it different different beast. So, anything else? I think yeah, I'm five minutes, so thank you, and uh, <laughs>